Okay, live video. This is going to be a Facebook live video, so it's going to be cute and short. And what could be cuter than puppies? Okay. Okay, turn around. Okay, I'm in the, uh, we have this little whelping box thing that's in our maintenance shop, so it's, you know, it's under a roof. And, whoa, there's a cat in here. A feral cat. But... There's also 12 puppies. And these are 12 Great Pyrenees puppies. And Frank's here. Yep. Is it really that cold? I just drank a really cold drink. Ah, that's why. So tell us about these puppies. What do you know about them? Um, they keep you the bad animals away and they're cute. Hmm. How old are they about? Um, I don't know. I think they're about a month. I think they're going to be five weeks this Friday. Oh, they get along with that cat, huh? Merlin's eating their food. Well, how come some of them have collars on and some of them don't? Uh, because those are the ones that are picked. Okay. And about how many of them are picked? Mm -hmm. About half. Yeah. About six of them are picked. So people have come and looked at them and liked them. And then given a deposit on them. And they get to put a collar on them. And then we write it down and it's their puppy. Here's one right here that's not picked. Oh, yes it is. It's got a collar on it. But this one's not. I'm surprised. This one is a big male. And he's pure white. And nobody's picked him yet. What do you do with the ones that nobody picks? Whatever happens to them? I don't know. Do you just kill them? Well, anyway, I thought I'd show these, you know, just for the cuteness factor. And uh, this is one of the things that we're doing here. And this is one of the things we have to do during the day is check on these guys and make sure they get fed. You got to pet them too. They got to be petted. They want to sit in your lap and everything. They're really nice and cuddly. But there's about six of them left. So if you need a great Pyrenees, if you're in the small farms business or the uh, homesteading business, you cannot beat this dog with a stick and if anybody out there is breeding them and would like to trade female for female straight across um, I would be interested in doing that because I kind of like to keep two females around all the time and I only have one right now and I want to get one that's come from a completely different uh, well you never know but I like to try and get something that's from a completely different bloodline so we could keep this going. These dogs are essential for pastured poultry, essential for it, because predation is so bad uh, when you have chickens out on the field. You know, it's just like a calling, like a dinner bell to all the foxes and skunks and raccoons and Nighthawks and owls and everything wants to come and eat your chickens, but when you have one of these dogs, uh, your your troubles are over, and I am here to attest to that because we had terrible trouble before, and once we got these dogs, it came to a close real quick. So this is good. Claire had 12 of them this time, and there's only one of them that was struggling for a little while, and his name is Maximus. Why don't you hold him up? And he was a little on the small side, but he's coming along and he spends a lot of time with the kids because he's the smallest and they like him. Hey, you're stepping on one of them. Okay. 
So he's well socialized. Yeah? Okay, Smart Baker's Green Acres, remember, anyone can farm.